It's been a while since we've heard anything about Pokémon Tournament, the arcade fighting game starring Pokémon and developed by Namco Bandai. But a recent demonstration not only showed off several new stages, but a new fighter as well in the form of the ghostly Gengar. So it's time to bring out the old analysis machine to see what secrets and hidden details we could find in this new footage. As always, be sure to watch our previous analyses, as we'll be skipping over what we've already discovered. Gengar himself looks to be a kind of trickster character. Every time he dashes, he becomes temporarily ephemeral, which may make him a little harder to pin down. At times during his trailer, we also see that his legs have phased through the ground, making him slightly shorter. We're not sure if this will affect his hitbox, but it's an interesting detail to include. So far, his moveset looks to include Shadow Ball, Shadow Punch, and Hex. Many of his combos include not only the typical punches and kicks, but his tongue as well for a variety of lick attacks. But Gengar has a few other tricks up his sleeve. At one point, Gengar takes a counter stance when Pikachu goes to hit him. He dodges it and immediately strikes back, making for an excellent move for catching opponents off balance. He also has a move that creates a swirling vortex that sends Pikachu straight into the air with multiple hits. Gengar also unleashes some kind of charged attack that looks a little like Scary Face, but it immediately breaks Gardevoir's shield. Was this just the final hit, or does the move tear through defenses? Finally, we see him create a ghostly image of his face before coming from the air for a drop kick. This doesn't seem to be a counter, so maybe the image serves as a distraction? Of course, Gengar's Resonance Burst will be his Mega Evolution, just like every other playable Pokémon that can Mega Evolve. But really, that's about it when it comes to Gengar. He certainly looks fun, but the rest of the footage provides an updated look at many of the older stages. While they all had Pokémon hanging around before, many now have humans in the background as well. Take Cromtown, which now has a Pokémon breeder hanging out near the small house. As the camera continues to pan to the right, we can see farmhands watching the fight from the fence. These were not here before, which indicates that this is a new build of the game. Whether or not this build is close to a finished one, we can't say for sure, but on the other side are a bug catcher and another person that seems to be checking out the nearby cave. A few other Pokémon have been inserted as well, such as Ursaring near this tree and Salzbuck's summer form on the left. As the camera continues to pan, we see a fisherman on the bridge and Doug Trio poking its head out of the ground. Cromtown has gotten a lot more populated. In contrast, there isn't that much new to see in the Blue Dome outside of a few Pokémon. Right away, we can see Whalemur swimming past soon after the Whale Lord. On the lower left side is a Sharpedo. Meanwhile, the Reef is hiding not only a Staryu, but a Finian as well. But that's really about it. Likewise, the only addition we were able to spot in Foss Volcano was the Researcher that's now been placed next to the Machoke. Then there were the new stages that we got to see. The first was the Old Town of Ferm, which very much looks like a European-inspired place. It's dust during the fights, and on the outskirts we see several buildings spread along a hillside with a fountain nearby. The footage is too blurry to say what the statue is of, but it's definitely human. At its base is a polytoad that looks to be dancing. Behind the statue is a clock tower with a parade of Pokémon statues just beneath the clock face. We think they're statues since they never actually move. Unfortunately, we can only really identify one of them, the Torchic that's leading the pack. To the left of the fountain is a small cafe area surrounding a purple-topped food stand. We can see a waiter standing near a trash can while a Pokémon flies nearby. We just don't know which one it is. One of the patrons is sitting at the far table while the other patron looks to actually be a Froakie. There's even somebody in the stand itself while someone plays the guitar nearby. But even the street lamp is modeled after Pokémon. Near the top, the metal is painted and designed to look like Roselia. Finally, on the lower right side is Smeargle, doing what comes naturally and painting. Farther to the left is a large garden, though there doesn't seem to be too many people within. All we can see are colored statues of Combusken and Grovile, while a Beautifly hovers nearby. Naturally, there's a Snorlax sleeping in front of the entrance, blocking anyone from going inside. It's a cute little nod to the original games and how Snorlax blocked the way. On the opposite side are even more buildings, along with an arch on the right and a castle on top of the mountain in the background. But in the more immediate area, there's a food truck along with a Munchlax jumping up and down just outside it. Near the balloons is a female Meow Stick. There seem to be more Pokémon on the benches, with one even bouncing in place, but we just can't make them out. Finally, as the camera finishes panning left, we see a huge bridge or aqueduct in the background and a Gotharita standing near the buildings. One of them has a weather vane on top too, which is shaped to look like Fletchling. 
The other new stage is called the Ferm Stadium, so it must take place within the old town of Ferm, though we never saw a place where the stadium could be. Perhaps there's a new town as well. The stadium itself looks mostly traditional, though there are gates set up along the outskirts, and guarding them are Watchog and Sock. But there's also a ring of water around the battle arena since we can see Dragonair watching from the left. You can even spot the Magnemite holding the camera here, something we get a much better look at in Gengar's trailer. That explains how the people at home can watch the tournament at least. As the camera pulls back, we can see platforms on either side for the trainers. The left one even has a male trainer on it along with a Pancham. But the more interesting person here is the female trainer who distinctly resembles the gym leader, Roxanne. We highly doubt it's actually her, but the dress and hairstyle does seem like it could be similar. The Gengar trailer shows us the opposite side of the stadium where we can see that it's near a waterfall and Atropius is watching from the outskirts as well. In another scene near the stands is a Swablu. The stadium is definitely the most traditional of the stages so far. But there was one more stage shown off. Gengar is introduced in a decrepit mansion. Everything is destroyed, even the huge window. But through it, we can see that the moon is positively gigantic. A scraggly old tree is there as well, but beside it is a Trevenant. And if you look at the curtain tassels surrounding the window, we can see that they're actually Shuppet. Unfortunately, there are no other Pokémon to be seen in the background, but we're positive that it'll be filled with other Ghost and Dark-type Pokémon. The last little detail, though, is the small table near the window that's holding two wine bottles and a glass. It's not often that alcoholic references are made in Pokémon, but it definitely fits the setting. We still have no idea if Pokémon Tournament will ever be released on consoles worldwide. As of yet, it's still only been shown off as a Japanese arcade game. But the idea is too good to just leave it in Japan, so we'll keep covering everything we can about Pokémon Tournament in the meantime. If you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at GameXplain to keep up with everything we do. Thanks for watching, and make sure to stay tuned to GameXplain for more on Pokémon and other things gaming.